he really changed Dallas, didn't he? You know, in the very first uh, magazine I read, when D Magazine came out, he was the man of the year, and that was in the early 80s. So already he had changed Dallas, and he continued to change it for decades after that. This city wouldn't be what it is without him. That's correct. Uh, that's both the business community and the philanthropic community and uh, the schools, everything. Let's talk about it from a philanthropic side. Um, you were with UT Southwestern for a long, long time. You, you, can you even put an estimated value on, on what he and his family gave? Well, I can put a dollar figure, but that underestimates the value. The dollar figure is around $100 million. Uh, the value is vastly in excess of that because not only was he providing money, he was providing inspiration and guidance and, it sounds a little corny, but love for the researchers, for the clinicians, and for the patients. He would come by and see patients at 10 o'clock at night, at 8 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, so many people all over the country would call his office for help trying to find the right kind of medical care if they felt let down by the VA or by the armed forces or just because they knew that Ross Perot would help. Wow. You just mentioned VA and armed forces. That played a role in the donations he gave to medical research, didn't it? Well, uh, one of the very important uh, contributions he made was to launch studies into the Gulf War Syndrome uh, at a time when it was presumed by most experts that Gulf War Syndrome was just psychological stress. Uh, and he gave some funds to have an epidemiologist at UT Southwestern, Robert Haley, study to see whether it was in fact just psychological or whether there was an organic problem as well. And Haley, who was f first skeptical and believed it probably was psychological, discovered that in fact it was due to exposure to neurotoxins in small doses uh, causing real neurological damage. And a lot of, I mean, thousands, hundreds of thousands of patients have been helped by that discovery. That changes the trajectory of really how patients are treated. That's right. And it also uh, changed how we fought later wars because the neurotoxins that were sometimes given even as prescriptions to ward off fleas and dicks in susceptible soldiers might cause a little nerve damage if they had the wrong genetic makeup. And now those kinds of therapies are not given to soldiers routinely. Wow. And also through your work at Children's. I mean, he was, he was generous with Children's as oh, well. Oh, he, he was indeed. Uh, Tell me personally what kind of a loss this is. Because I would imagine if for all these years of, of knowing each other, you, there was a friendship. Oh, he, he was a friend and a mentor and an inspiration to many people, not least myself. Uh, and there's nobody else like him. I mean, there's a tremendous number of great people in Dallas, but his variety of greatness is unique, it really is. Final thing, I guess, is just what was it about him? Um, was it his selflessness? Was it his, to be a self-made billionaire, he seemed a little unassuming to me. He seemed like he just was also kind of, hey, I'm a regular guy who, who made, made some money, you know. He, he was a regular guy and he went to a regular barber shop for a regular haircut and he wore regular clothes, but he always insisted that whatever he was associated with, business-wise or what he gave his money to philanthropically, needed to be first class. World class was his favorite phrase. And that was his hallmark and his insistence on excellence inspired other people to insist on excellence. and. When he gave money, he insisted on excellence, but interestingly, he did not micromanage. He wanted to know what was going on, he approved it, he gave his money, and then he never second-guessed. And I told his sister, Betty, one time that, you know, many philanthropists, fortunately not so many in Dallas, but around the country, microman try to micromanage their gift after they've given it. And she said, there's one thing you have to understand about Ross. He doesn't do anything micro, <laughs> and that was true. He saw the big picture and he left the details to other people as long as they were striving for excellence.